Hello Internet! Welcome to the Twitter Heart Disease tutorial by the World Wellbeing Project. The goal of this tutorial is to reproduce some of the key findings of a paper that we published January 2015. In this paper, we showed that we could predict heart disease mortality rates at the U.S. county level using language variables um, that were gained through Twitter. So what we did was we um, took tweets, we geotagged them, we found out what county they were they were sent from, and then we derive language variables, um, things like dictionaries and topic variables, relative frequencies, and showed how they related to the heart disease mortality of the counties. And one of the coolest things I think we found in that paper is that communities have these psychological profiles. Um, and so you can use uh, language analysis techniques over the language from a county to get a sense of what the anger score is, what the relationship uh, quality is in that county, the disengagement level in that county, and so forth. And what we did in the paper show that these county level language variables are associated with um, heart disease mortality, specifically um, atherosclerotic heart disease mortality. So the goal of this tutorial um, is to take the data that we published um, with the paper in 2015 and to reproduce some of the key findings from that paper. So if you want to do this, here's what you need to do before doing this tutorial. You should install R, which you should do anyway because R is the future and it's really fun. And you should install R Studio. Both of them are free. Um, R Studio is probably the most popular GUI for R um, graphical user interface. And finally, you want to download the data from the Urban Science Framework, and here's the link, and hopefully we can link it out. So you just have to click it. Okay, so now we've loaded um, this link, and we're on the Open Science Framework. And then on the left here, you see the files that you can download as part of this project. There's two files that we're particularly interested in right now. It's Dictionary Stands, um, the frequency table that has the dictionary frequencies in it for every county and the county outcomes. And these are two zip files. So let's go ahead and download them, um, make a folder, download them, and then un unpack them. Okay, so now we've downloaded the two files here, the dictionaries and the outcomes. We're going to unpack them. Uh, in this location, I made a folder, Twitter demo. Um, okay, and now finally we can start in R. So I opened up R Studio, and the first thing we need to do um, is we need to set a working directory. So um, let's do that. In case you're wondering why my keyboard is so loud, it's Dust Keyboard. It's one of the loudest keyboards you can buy. Um, so apologies. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to load um, the dictionaries from the CSV, um, right? So I've set the working directory here. Control Enter executes it, right? So you see it on the right there. Um, now I'm going to read this CSV. I'm a I actually have it here on a different screen. Um, I'm going to just copy it over, just the file name, and then um, I'm just out of habit. I'm just going to add strings as factors equals false. That protects us from um, our deciding that strings are factors in this data set. Um, and we're going to do the same with the county level outcomes. We're going to read the CSV. Um, and then the file is just called county outcomes.csv. Um, and then we're going to strings as factors. Yep, I, I would tab just completes it. You can hit F or F false. Uh, both are as happy with. Now on the right here in the environment, um, you see the two um, data frames, they're called. Um, uh, so think of them like spreadsheets. So this is a spreadsheet that has 10 columns and 1,347 rows. Every row is a county in the US. So the first thing we should do, we should always do when working with data is we should look at it with our eyes. Um, and for that, I'm going to use ggplot. Or you can also just use plot, but um, getting to the habit of using ggplot for everything, I think, is, is, is good form. So um, in case you don't have it installed yet, all you need to do is you need to say um, install packages ggplot, control, enter. I think in my case it might mope because it's already installed or loaded. Nope. Okay, so um, now I've over-installed uh, ggplot on my system. Now I'm just going to load it by saying require. You can also use the, the command library. Okay, but now ggplot is loaded into the background and you can use its functions. So the first thing we want to do is I want to look at the distribution of the anger variable across US counties. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to use quickplot or qplot from ggplot. Um, I'm going to 
take the data frame that I have above. Um, data frame can be accessed with the dollar sign. This shows me all the column headings, the same thing you see on the right here. And if I now select enter and then um, uh, select anger and then hit control enter, bam, on the right here you see um, a histogram. So that looks super reassuring. Um, let's do the same thing for our key outcome variable. Um, and the outcome variable is in the outcomes data frame and it starts with UCD. It's this beast of a variable here. So that stands for underlying cause of death, ICD code I25.1, atherosclerotic heart disease, um, averaged across 2009, uh, 2009, 2010, and age adjusted both by the CDC. So we just hit tab now, it gets loaded, control enter, so we're looking at this and um, this is, of course, the variance is, is restricted on the low end. You can't have less than zero people dying. Um, so it's not quite a normal distribution, but I would call that a gentleman's normal distribution. All right, so the next thing we wanna do after we've convinced ourselves that everything is reasonably well behaved is we're gonna to wanna to merge these two data frames. So I'm gonna say I want a new data frame. I'm gonna call this DICT outcomes um, and I'm gonna Oops, uh, I'm going to merge the two data frames above, so dicts and outcomes, and the merge function needs a key by which it can merge. Um, so the key in the dicts dictionary is a field called group ID. Um, this is sort of convention, it's just an output of our Python infrastructure. Um, if you look here, um, group ID on the right here in the environment, um, th those are four um, digit integers their FIPS code, they're the standard codes that um, uh, identify counties. And then you see in the outcome table here, there's also a field that has these integers in them. Um, and we now need to tell the merge function um, what these fields are so it can line up the rows. Um, bam. So now we have a data frame, dicts outcomes. Um, unfortunate name, but so be it. All right, so dicts outcomes. Um, you can see now here at the top, the first columns in this data frames are the ones that inherited from the dicts data frame. And then at the bottom, you see the outcomes data frame. Okay, good. Now we have a data frame that combines them both. It has the nice property that we now correlate things across the data frame. Um, it, it, it'll be all nicely lined up. Um, the merge function did that for us. So let's just do a first order correlation, um, just a built-in function um, of R. So um, that's the command core for correlations. So we're gonna start typing dicts, but then uh, um, as soon as we hit um, halfway point, we can hit the tabulator um, and it'll auto complete the thing for us. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna pick the heart disease outcome and we're gonna um, select the data frame again and uh, pick the anger outcome. Um, and now I'm gonna control enter and this is the correlation, 16.613. Um, so that's already, um, if we're going to go back to the heart disease paper, um, this is already this correlation here in the table. See this? The, the 17 here is already what you're seeing here. It's 16.6 uh, rounded to 17 in the paper. Okay, so but now let's do a little more. Um, the next thing we want to do, this is nice as a single number, but let's get some confidence intervals. So we just use core test, which is a a slightly pr uh, spruced up core function. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the same content that we used before. And now we get the p-value. So that's um, eight times 10 to the minus 10. Um, here are the degrees of freedom. So it's the number of rows minus the number of parameters. Here's the t-statistic and here's our confidence interval. It's from 11 to 21. So if we if we go back to the paper, 11, 20, 22 in this case, so I guess we round it again. Yes, 21.7. Um, so that's so we've already reproduced this key finding. Um, that's it. This is the end of the tutorial. Just kidding. I'm doing a little more. Um, hopefully that gives you a sense of how to work with the data already, though. Um, and with the topics, it's just the same the same idea. Um, and if you're interested in the content of the topics that were used in the paper, they're also published on the 
uh, what will being project website and um, which words make up the different topics now though I want to do one more thing I want to control for income and education like we did in the paper and I want to show you that this correlation remains significant even after controlling for income and education so I'm going to do it the same way that we did it in the paper there's a number of different ways of doing it so I'm going to make a new variable I'm going to call this socioeconomic status SES and I'm going to make socioeconomic status an index of high school and bachelor graduation rates and county level income um, those um, sub variables were already contained in the um, outcome data frame so we already have them here so so if you scroll down here a little bit high school bachelor graduation rates um, this is from the um, American Community Survey um, but rather than use those we want to turn them into z-scores by scaling them scaling them will just um, subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation right so just to be sure we're all on the same page I can just show you this real quick so right so we have a variable and we're gonna we're gonna plot it and there you see right so it's a um, you see it has a I think it looks like this has already been standardized honestly um, it's centered on it's centered on zero and it has a standard deviation of one um, which you can probably tell from the fact that by the time I re-standardize in it it looks exactly the same well it wasn't quite standardized now it's standardized um, all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take these high school and bachelor graduation rates and add to it the z-scored version of the income variable right so I'm gonna just do that real quick um, where's income there's income right Let's just check everything one more time okay now the data frame has a new variable the SES variable um, that combines these two things which we can use as a control down the line okay so to apply the control there's a complicated and an easy way let's do it the easy way so with most things are there is a one-liner that does everything for you in this case um, it requires another package um, the question the package called PP core as in partial correlations okay R is moping um, I already had it loaded so we are over installing it was already loaded and it's um, has it restarted R yeah but it's reloaded uh, environment okay so I'm gonna load it into memory so I have the functions available um, and now I'm gonna instead of um, using core test I can now use a function p core test and if I mark it and hit f1 right so it's explained to me here on the right in very elegant R fashion um, so we're gonna take the things um, that we're interested in so we're gonna take our outcome variable the heart disease Oops, a heart disease. Um, we're going to take the anger and we're going to take our SES. Um, and now we've controlled for SES. We've, what we've done is we've um, basically um, correlated anger against SES and taken the residuals and anger that couldn't be accounted for by SES and then we've correlated SES against heart disease and taken the residuals in heart disease that couldn't be accounted for by SES and then with these two residuals here we've correlated these residuals um, to hopefully isolate the part of heart disease mortality that is due to anger after completely partialing out the effect of socioeconomic status and if you look at the statistics here those are the ones that are referenced in the text in the heart disease paper and then just to be completely thorough I think the last thing we should do is to look at um, a scatter plot of the two variables and see um, if it's driven by outliers if the linear fit between the two variables will be driven by an outlier so we fire up qplot again um, we select the same outcomes that we have here so let me just copy them the um, heart disease and the anger um, so this will create a scatter plot 
without the linear fit. Um, and the linear fit, if you want to put it in, it's geom smooth that creates this nice object that has the confidence bounds around it. Um, and then we're just going to tell it that we want um, a linear model. So if we do this, we get a scatter plot with a linear fit. And you can see it's not the world's greatest correlation, but it seems to represent the data adequately. So thank you very much for joining this tutorial. If you're interested about correlations with the other variables and so forth, hopefully you're now in the position to do so, right? So you just need to, if you're interested in something like engagement, all you need to do is just copy over the same thing, take the engagement variable, and you can reproduce what else is in the paper in that table. Um, if you're interested in reproducing topic, correlations. The topics are also uploaded uh, in a dense format should make it very easy. That will give you correlations between topic IDs and the outcomes. And if you want to figure out what words are in these topics, you have to go to our website under resources. That's www.bp.org under resources um, and click the 2000 Facebook topics and that will map every topic ID towards. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can email me. This is my email address. I'm Johannes. Um, I enjoyed um, doing this quick tutorial. I hope you enjoyed R, um, and I hope this is helpful to you. All the best. Bye-bye.